What a busy bunch. <sighs> I'm lucky to have such helpful neighbors. How's your sprained ankle feeling today, Miss Honey? Oh, it's still pretty sore, Sally. I couldn't get around without this old crutch. Wow! Look at that mountain of leaves! I know! It's just waiting to be jumped in! Then let's not keep it waiting, Big Woot! <laughs> Cannonball! <laughs> I knew Big Will and Pig Won't wouldn't be able to resist doing that. Let's finish this job with Loli's Leaf Blower! <gasps> Thank you so much for all your help. Raking leaves is a big job this time of year. Now, how can I reward you? Oh, you don't need to give us a reward, Miss Honey. She doesn't? No, we're just happy to help. It's fun. That's right. As much fun as solving mysteries. Hmm. I don't think we've solved any mysteries this week, have we? Nope, but if we're lucky, maybe we'll find a mystery to solve tomorrow. We'll just have to keep our fingers crossed. And I'll just cross my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Thanks again. And good luck finding your mystery. Huckle! Sally! Lily! Help us! Pig will, pig won't. What's wrong? Look what we found in our mailbox this morning. Please come to my party today at 2 p.m. Oh, it's a party invitation. Why are you upset about that? Because it doesn't say who is giving the party. Or where it's going to be. And if we don't know where the party is, we can't go to it. Well, that is a problem. Gee. Look, we got an invitation too. Read it. What's it say? Please come to my party today at 2 p.m. Where? You'll have to figure that out. Who? When you find the answer, you'll know. Oh. That doesn't tell us anything. Yes, it does. It tells us a lot, right, Hucko? Right, Loli. It tells us whoever is giving the party has also given us a... Mystery! <laughs> Dog Bug here, reporting live from the scene of a mysterious mail delivery. That's right, Goldbug. We were sent party invitations, but we don't know who's having the party or where the party is. But we are going to find out and solve this mystery. Right, team? Right, Hucko! You know it. Ready for it? Here goes! Who, what, why, how? Who, what, when, where, why, how? Who, what, why, how? Who, what, when, where, why, how? Everybody! Who, what, when, where, why, how? Solve a mystery!
Stay tuned, folks, as Huckle and his team try to solve the mystery of the mystery invitation. I'm Goldbug, and that's the buzz in Busy Town. We better solve this mystery soon, Huckle. The party starts at 2 o'clock. Ah! What if there's cake and we're not there to eat it? He's right! We've got to hurry! Calm down, guys. We'll figure this out. Hmm. This is interesting. The envelope doesn't have a postage stamp on it. Ours doesn't have a stamp either. The post office won't deliver a letter unless it has a postage stamp on it. See? These other letters have stamps on them. Is that a clue? Maybe. If the invitations weren't delivered by the mailman, they must have been delivered in person by the mystery party giver. That means whoever is giving the party was standing right here at our mailbox not very long ago. Let's check for clues around the mailbox. Hey, look at those funny circle marks. Do you think these were made by the mystery party giver, Huckle? Well, if they were, then we'll find the same kind of circle marks at Pig Will and Pig Won't's house. Let's go! Follow me! Now follow me! You are right, Huckle. Whoever delivered the mystery invitations must be making these circle marks. It looks like someone has been poking the ground with a round-ended stick of some kind. Hmm. Let's think. What kind of stick could make a mark like that? <laughs> Hi, guys! A pogo stick! Hilda, wait! Stop, Hilda! Come back! <laughs> Hilda, wait, wait up! Slow down! Wow! You two should join the gymnastics team. Do we get cake? No, just medals and ribbons. Sorry, we only moved this fast for cake. <laughs> Solving a mystery! Oh, that sounds exciting! Hilda! Is it chocolate? Or vanilla? What kind of icing? Will there be ice cream? What about a pinata? Can I get the cake? No, me! Oh, I asked first! Whoa, slow down! What are you talking about? <sighs> Thanks for the mystery, Hilda. It was a lot of fun. The mystery? What mystery? Let's get started! Bring out the cake! Hooray! Hold on, guys. Take a closer look at these marks. Some are smaller than others. Huckle's right. The end of Hilda's pogo stick fits perfectly into the larger circle prints. But it's too big to have made them all. And it's the smaller ones that make a trail right to Hilda's mailbox. Look, I got an invitation. But it doesn't say who sent it or where the party is. That's the mystery we're trying to solve, Hilda. So far, we know that the mystery invitations were delivered by someone who makes these circle marks when they walk around. But we don't know who. Hey, I just noticed something. The mystery invitations are in the shape of a leaf. You're right, Sally. Maybe the leaf shapes are a clue to where the party is. Some place where there are a lot of leaves. Trees have leaves. Where can we find a lot of trees? The, the park! Let's go! <laughs> No party here. No leaves either. Of course! We forgot that it's autumn. The leaves have all fallen from the trees. But where are they? The ground should be covered in them. Guys, look at these marks in the grass. Those aren't circle marks. No, they look like claw marks. It's a leaf chopping monster! Yuck! Oh, yeah. Yeah. It. Well, look who's here. Your leaf raking machine sure does a great job, Mr. Fix-It. Oh my, yes, it's a real time saver. Raking leaves is a big job at this time of year. We know. We helped rake leaves for Miss Honey yesterday. Well, that's mighty nice of you. Well, how's her ankle doing? Does she still have to use that crutch? Hmm, the crutch. Sally, 
Can you please show me the pictures you took of the circles in the ground? Of course. I think I know who the mystery party giver is. Don't bug here again. Get ready to party with Huckle and his team as they solve the mystery of the mystery invitation. What's the scoop, Huckle? Well, Goldbug, here's what I think happened. We all got invitations to a party, but the invitations didn't say who was giving the party or where it was. We figured that whoever sent the invitations was giving us a mystery to solve. We discovered circle marks in the ground that were left by the mystery party giver. We also noticed that each invitation was in the shape of a leaf. So we knew that the mystery had something to do with leaves. It wasn't until we met Mr. Fixit and we told him about raking leaves at Miss Honey's that I remembered her crutch. The end of a crutch is in the shape of a circle, just like the circle marks we found in the ground. So I think it was Miss Honey who sent us the leaf-shaped mystery invitations because she wanted to reward us for helping her rake up all her leaves. And what better reward than a mystery to solve Followed by a party. Everybody all together solved a mystery with Huckle. You can solve one too. Hooray for Huckle! Get out the noisemakers. We're going to a party. Thanks for a great mystery, Miss Honey. And thanks for the cake. You're very welcome. I'm glad you're all enjoying yourselves. Look at me! I can bounce the highest! Oh, yeah! Yeah! Oh. He did it! He did it! Oh, well. If a good deed is worth doing, it's worth doing twice. Right. Let's get busy, everybody. Here we go again. <laughs> Does this mean we'll get to have another party? And another cake? <laughs> 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 A spoonful of mystery. Looking for a good picnic spot around here sure has its ups and downs. Well, the search is over. I see the perfect spot in this valley. So from here on, it's downhill all the way. Follow me! Come on, Apple Car. You can do it. Whew. This drive is like riding a roller coaster! Whoa! Hey, Sally and Huckle. Hi, Bruno. I'm looking for the spectacular soup diner. You didn't happen to see it on your travels, did you? Nope, never heard of it. It's supposed to be on this road somewhere with a big sign out front, but I haven't been able to find it. <sighs> and until I do, there'll be no chicken noodle soup for me. I guess I'll just have to keep looking. See you later. Bye! Oh, Lily! <sighs> I think this picnic basket adds a little too much weight on the uphills and downhills. Don't worry, Lily. It'll be a lot lighter after our picnic. It looks like it's a lot lighter now. Rudolph on Flugel? Oh no, he doesn't know he's dragging his anchor. Come on, team, follow that Zeppelin. Hmm, where is this soup restaurant? of coming to a fork in the road, but not a spoon. Where do you think it came from? I don't know, but I do know one thing. It looks like we have a... Mystery! Busy Town Action Fun News! This is Goldbug for Busy Town Action News. It seems we have a spoonful of mystery on our hands. What's the scoop, Huckle? Well, Goldbug, it seems someone left a giant spoon in the middle of the road. And, and we're, we're going, going to find, find out who. Ready for it? Here goes! Who, what, why, how? Who, what, when, where, why, how? Who, what, why, how? Who, what, when, where, why, how? Everybody! Who, what, when, where, why, how? Solve a mystery! 
mystery. Better stay tuned as Huckle and his team solve the spoonful of mystery. I'm Goldbug, and that's the buzz in Busy Town. Where do we begin, Huckle? Well, let's see. Who do we think would use such a big spoon? How about a giant? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Loli. There's no such thing as giants in real life. Maybe it's not a spoon at all. Maybe it's a shovel. Hmm. You might be right, Sally but it doesn't have any dirt on it. Maybe because it's a new shovel. Could be. Maybe someone just bought this shovel and it fell out of their car. The hardware store sells shovels. We could ask if anyone recently bought a shovel that looks like a big spoon. Good idea, Sally. Let's go see. Hi, kids. Hi, Hi Bruno. Bruno. I'm getting really hungry and I still can't find that soup restaurant sign. Have any of you seen it yet? No, but we'll keep our eyes open for it. Thanks. Come on, let's go to the hardware store. Isn't this a funny looking shovel, Mr. Phillips? Well, I don't think it is a shovel. Come with me. I'll show you where I keep the shovels and other gardening tools and, well, you can see for yourselves. Nothing here looks at all like what we found. So I guess it's not a shovel or any gardening tool. I must say it does look like a giant spoon. It's the strangest thing I've seen in a long while. Wait a minute. That's the strangest thing I've seen in a long while. Let's check it out. Come on, guys. Oh, hey! Watch where you're going! You watch where you're going! Hey, I recognize those voices. Me too. Hi, Pigwell and Pigwall. Oh, hi! Hi, guys. What are you doing? We're taking home this giant bowl we found lying on the road. Mom always tells us we can only have one bowl of ice cream after supper. So, so we're, we're going, going to use this bowl! <laughs> hmm, a big bowl, a big spoon. I wonder if they belong together. Where did you find it? Near Patrick Pig's farm. That's interesting. We found the giant spoon close to his farm, too. Maybe we should head back there to look for more clues. Come on, team! That was one monster spoon! And this is one massive bowl! Maybe there's a humongous dessert that goes with them! Let's go! Hi, kids! Do any of you know how to get to the spectacular soup diner? Sorry, Beverly. We don't. Bruno Bear asked us the same question earlier. It's supposed to be easy to find. Everyone says, just look for the big sign out front. You can't miss it. But I haven't seen a sign anywhere. <sighs> I guess I'll keep looking. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. I keep expecting to find a giant knife or a giant fork. Whoa, I see a giant fork. Huh? Really? Where? There, in the hayfield. It's part of Patrick Pig's tractor. Since Patrick Pig has a piece of equipment for his tractor that looks like a giant fork, then maybe he lost a piece of equipment that looks like a giant spoon. You could be right, Huckle. Let's go ask him. Well, I do use a giant fork for moving hay, but I don't have any shovels or scoops that look like this giant spoon you found. I said turn! Yeah, but you didn't say which way. <laughs> Let's find the humongous dessert. Yeah, and it will be so big, we won't mind sharing it with you. Uh, will we? Thanks anyway, but we still have this spoonful of mystery to solve. Look, it's Mr. Von Flugel again. Oh, no! His anchor just knocked off the weather vane from the barn. Hmm, I wonder if the anchor had something to do with the big spoon we found. Maybe the anchor knocked the spoon off of something. Maybe. There's one way to find out. Follow, Follow that 
Zeppelin! My goodness! Have I been dragging my anchor all this time? That's not all you've been dragging, Mr. Von Flugel. Oh, dear! Did I snag your picnic basket, too? I'm sorry. What a mess I've made! All because I've been flying around looking for the spectacular soup diner. And according to this flyer, it's supposed to be easy to find. Just look for the giant sign. But I can't find it anywhere. That makes three of you who can't find the restaurant sign. Hmm. I think I've just solved our mystery. This is Goldbug ready to dish up some piping hot news. So, Huckle, give us the ladle, <laughs> latest on this spoonful of mystery. Sure, Goldbug. Here's what I think happened. When we were chasing Mr. Von Flugel's Zeppelin to get our picnic basket back, we came across a giant spoon lying on the road. When Pig Will and Pig Won't showed up with a giant bowl they'd found, we figured the giant bowl and spoon probably belonged together. Seeing Mr. Von Flugel's anchor knock the weather vane off Patrick Pig's barn got me thinking that maybe his anchor had knocked the giant spoon and bowl off of something. It wasn't until Mr. Von Flugel said he couldn't find the big sign outside the restaurant and showed us the flyer with a picture of the sign on it that I figured it out. I think Mr. Von Flugel's anchor must have crashed into the restaurant sign, carrying pieces of it away. And that's why no one could find it. I also think the soup restaurant sign had a giant bowl and spoon. The same giant bowl and spoon that we found. Super detective work, Huckle. To be super duper sure, we now need to find the restaurant. So that's why I couldn't find the sign. I broke it. Mystery, Mystery solved. solved. Everybody all together solved a mystery with Huckle. You can solve one, two. Hooray for Huckle! There you have it, folks. Huckle and his team have solved the spoonful of mystery. And everything's just superb. This is Goldbug signing off. Oh, I guess I'd better go help fix the sign. I'm the leader! No, I am! Huh? I guess there won't be a big dessert for our big bowl after all. All that hard work and not even a chocolate chip or a candy sprinkle to show for it. Pig Woo, we've got our bowl back! Yay! Hey, Mr. Crane Operator! Can you please send up enough ice cream to fill this bowl? And a spoon full of chocolate sprinkles! <laughs> 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 the Whoop 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 Mystery! Sally, you throw it and it's supposed to come right back to you. Watch. Uh, I think you just threw your boomerang away, Vanderbilt. Obviously, it's going to take some practice. Bye. Good luck, Vanderbilt. Hey, where's Loli? Surprise! Loli boomerang always comes back. <laughs> huh? Whoa! This looks just like Sergeant Murphy's motorcycle helmet. It is my motorcycle helmet. Something just knocked it right off my head. Maybe it was the wind. Hmm. I don't think so, Sally. I'll show you. Wet a finger and put it in the air. If there's any wind, your wet finger will feel cold. Is anyone's finger cold? No. no. Which means something else knocked your helmet off, Sergeant Murphy. That's what I thought. The wind wouldn't knock my helmet off two times. Two times? Yes. First it was knocked off this way. I put it back on, then something knocked it off again that way. Hmm. Did you see anything? No. 
Whatever did it was gone before I could see it. But I heard it. It went whoop, whoop, whoop. What do you think it was, Huckle? I don't know what it was. But what I do know is this is a... Mystery! Busy Television Park News! Goldbug here, reporting live from Busy Town Park. So, how about it, Huckle? Do you think you can knock off a solution to this whoop, whoop, whoop mystery? You bet, Goldbug. We'll figure out what knocks Sergeant Murphy's helmet off. Two times. And solve the whoop, whoop, whoop mystery. Ready for it? Here goes! Who, what, why, how? Who, what, when, where, why, how? Who, what, why, how? Who, what, when, where, why, how? Everybody! Who, what, when, where, why, how? Solve a mystery! Who, what, when, where, why, how? All together! Who, what, when, where, why, how? Huckle Cat, you and me! for important news updates. Go, Bug. <laughs> okay, Huckle. I leave it to you then. I have some traffic to direct. Good luck. Hold everything. We just solved the mystery. You did? Yes, it was a bat. A bat knocked Sergeant Murphy's helmet off. A bat? Why do you think that? Because bat wings go woo, woo, woo when they flap. Woo, 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 woo. Well, it is possible. But maybe we should ask someone who knows about bats. Who in Busy Town would know about bats? Vanderbilt! He's here in the park practicing throwing his boomerang. Let's go find him. But what if the bat comes back? It bumps into us. Ooh. find my boomerang. It's still not coming back to me. You'll get the hang of it. Just keep practicing. By the way, Vanderbilt, do you know anything about bats? Hmm. I know everything about bats. Good, because we need to know if bat wings make a whoop, whoop, whoop sound when they flap. Yes, bat wings could make a sound like that. We told you it was a bat that knocked Sergeant Murphy's helmet off. But bats don't fly around in the daytime. They sleep during the day and only fly at night. Aww. Ah, here's my boomerang. Now I must continue practicing. Good day. Bye. Thanks for helping, Vanderbilt. But if it wasn't the wind or a bat that knocked Sergeant Murphy's helmet off, what was it? We know! It was a bat! But Sergeant Murphy's helmet was knocked off during the day, so it couldn't have been a bat. That's right. Vanderbilt just said... Bats fly around at night and sleep during the day. Uh, maybe the bat was uh, flying in his sleep? I don't think so. Um... Okay, let's drive around and see if we can find something else that goes whoop, whoop, whoop. Motorcycles sort of go whoop, whoop, whoop. Motorboats sort of go whoop, whoop, whoop. Too. True, but it would have been impossible for a motorcycle or a motorboat to have knocked off Sergeant Murphy's helmet. So what now, Huckle? Let's go back to the park. There must be a clue there somewhere. Hold everything! We solved the mystery! You found that bat? Huh? What bat? The bat you said you thought was making the whoop, whoop, whoop sounds. Don't be silly. Bats don't fly around in the daytime. So now what do you think knocked off Sergeant Murphy's helmet? It was one of those grass sprinklers! It's a good guess. Except that Sergeant Murphy's helmet wasn't wet when it was knocked off his head. Hey, look at that! Someone let a whole bunch of balloons go. They're my balloons! And I didn't let them go. I was holding them up like this. And the next thing I knew, they were floating away. Something snapped all their strings. Whatever did it was gone before I could see it. But I heard it. It went whoo, whoo, whoo. The bat is back! Ew. But bats only 
fly at night time. Not this bad. Obviously, it was wearing dark sunglasses. That made it think it was night time. Baker Humperdinck, what happened to your bread? It looks like all the tops have been chopped off. Yes, I was delivering the bread when suddenly something flew by and chopped off all the tops. It was gone before I could see it. But I heard it. It went whoop, whoop, whoop. A hungry bat with sunglasses. All right, let's think for a minute. Is there something else that goes whoop, 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 flies, and could have knocked off Sergeant Murphy's hat two times, snapped the balloon strings, and chopped the bread? What about a helicopter? It has blades that go whoop, whoop, whoop when they spin around. And it would be easy for spinning helicopter blades to break the balloon strings and chop the bread. That makes sense, but it must have been a pretty small helicopter if Sergeant Murphy, Hilda, and Baker Humperdinck didn't see it go by. Do we know anyone who has a helicopter that small? Busy Town Action Bug News! Maybe it was Goldbug in the Busy Town Action Bug News helicopter. To the Busy Town Airport. Let's go! Hey, Goldbug. You were at the park today. Why, yes. Yes, I was. Uh-huh! We knew it was your helicopter that snapped Hilda's balloon strings. And chopped the tops off Baker Humperdinck's bread. And knocked off Sergeant Murphy's hat. But I wasn't in my helicopter. I was in my news van. Bad! <laughs> okay, back to the park. Maybe we missed a clue. Listen, do you hear that? It's a whoop, whoop, whoop sound. It's coming from over there. Now it sounds like it's changing direction, going back the way it came. Something just cut the tops off all those flowers. Let us guess. Whatever did it was gone before you saw it. But you heard it. And it went whoop, whoop, whoop. Why, yes. How did you know? <laughs> we just had a hunch. From up here, it looks like whatever cut the tops off the flowers flew back the way it came. That strange it would be flying one direction and then just turn around and fly back in the other direction. Yes, it is odd it would fly back the way it came. And you know, for some reason, that whoop, whoop, whoop we heard sounded very familiar. But I can't remember where I heard it before. Hmm. Aha! I think I know what the answer to the mystery is. So, Huckle, have you solved this batty mystery? I think so, Goldbug. And it definitely wasn't a bat. Here's what I think happened. Something knocked Sergeant Murphy's helmet off two times. He didn't see it, but he heard it go whoop, whoop, whoop. Next, something snapped Hilda's balloon strings, chopped the tops off Baker Humperdinck's bread, then cut a path through the flower bed. Whatever it was went whoop, 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 and seemed to fly back the way it came. It wasn't until I saw Vanderbilt that I remembered his boomerang. It goes whoop, 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 and it flies back the way it came. So I think it was Vanderbilt's boomerang that did it all. I think the boomerang knocked Sergeant Murphy's helmet off once. And then when it flew back the way it came, it knocked it off a second time. Then it snapped the balloon strings, chopped the bread, and mowed through the flowers. Sounds to me like you've solved another one, Huckle. Everybody all together solved a mystery with Huckle. You can solve one too. Hooray for Huckle! But how can we know for sure that it wasn't a bat? Everyone duck! <laughs> Not again! <laughs> I finally caught my boomerang! I want to try! <laughs> the Missing Mayor Mystery Neither can I. I hope Mayor Fox gets here soon to say his speech and cut the ribbon. 
Me too. Because the sooner he does, the sooner we can all get rolling. Hurry! You hurry! I am hurrying! Well, hurry faster! Hi, everybody! Whoa! <gasps> Why didn't you stop us? It's your job to do the stopping. It is not. It's too. Bug here. It's the moment that all the skaters and boarders have been waiting for. Mayor Fox, Busy Town's biggest big wheel, has finally arrived to officially open the new skate park. <coughs> As mayor of Busy Town, it is my great honor to declare this skate park. Uh, uh, hmm. Oh dear. Hmm. I've left my special ribbon-cutting scissors back at City Hall. Oh, silly me. Aww. It wouldn't be a proper official opening if I didn't cut the ribbon with my special scissors. I'll be right back with them. Oh. Hmm. Oh, no. Is there something wrong with the mayor's car? He's stepping on the gas, but it isn't moving. If the mayor doesn't get rolling, neither will we. I know what's wrong. <laughs> I forgot to release the brake lever. Oh, silly me. I'll be back in five minutes. Hold on to your wheels, busy town. We'll be right back when Mayor Fox comes right back. This is Goldbug, live from Busy Town Skate Park. <laughs> What could be keeping Mayor Fox so long? I don't know. He said he'd be back in five minutes, but that was a whole hour ago. Up, Periscope. Hmm. Nope. Still no sign of the mayor. We're tired of waiting. We want to show off our cool skateboard. Yeah! Watch me bust a move. No, watch me bust a move. Turn that way! No, that way! Whoa! Goldbug here. <sighs> Still waiting and wondering what's happened to Mayor Fox. Did he get lost? Did he forget we're all waiting for him? Where, oh where, can our missing mayor be? It's a... mystery! Ready for it? Here goes! was worth waiting for. Get ready to roll with Huckle and his team as they solve the missing mayor mystery. The best place to start looking for a missing mayor is City Hall. That's where he went to get the scissors. So maybe he's still there. Good plan, Huckle. Why are you honking, Sally? Did you see something? It's not me, Huckle. My horn sounds like this. <laughs> And mine sounds like this. Huh. It must be coming from somewhere else. Oh well, back to business. Let's get to City Hall. We have a missing mayor to find. That's funny. The parking gate is broken off. How do you think that happened, Huckle? I don't know, Loli. It's a mystery. <laughs> Hang on to your parking passes, Busy Town. Our mystery busters are driving towards a solution to the broken parking gate mystery. Maybe we can solve that one later, Goldbug. We have to solve the missing mayor mystery first, remember? Oh, right. Sorry. Later, mystery fans. Quill, 
We were wondering if Mayor Fox came back for a special ribbon cutting scissors. Oh, yes, well over an hour ago. As I recall, he left again in quite a rush. He said he wanted to get back to the skate park as soon as possible because there were lots of children waiting for him. Well, they're still waiting. Oh, my. Mayor Fox isn't at the skate park? Where could he be? That's the mystery we're trying to solve. Do you think he might have stayed here? At City Hall for some reason? That's possible. There are always lots of meetings going on here. Being mayor is a very busy job. Especially when you're mayor of Busy Town. City Hall has many, many rooms. It will take a lot of time to look in every one. And what if Mayor Fox isn't in a meeting after all? Then we'll have wasted a lot of time. Well, if he is still at City Hall, his car will still be in the parking lot. We should look there first. Right. If the mayor's car is still here, then so is the mayor. Such clever children. The mayor parks in space number one. Space number one is empty. Mayor Fox has definitely left the building. Hey, what's this? Hmm. I don't know, Luli, but I'm sure I've seen something like it before somewhere. Well, we'd better pick it up. Someone might drive over it and get a flat tire. A flat tire? Maybe that's what happened to the mayor. If he got a flat tire, he wouldn't have been able to drive very far. He'd probably still be right here in the parking lot. Or he would have left his car here and taken the bus. Up, oh, Periscope! Nope, no sign of the mayor's car. Okay, so what do we know so far? We know that the mayor got the scissors and left again in his car. Ah, <sighs> but we still don't know where he went. All we know is where he didn't go. Back to the skate park! Maybe Mayor Fox took a wrong turn. Let's see. Once he drove out of the parking lot and down the long hill, he'd have to stop at that intersection. Yeah! Watch where we're going! I can't! My eyes are closed! The brakes! We don't have any brakes! Hmm. Brakes. Brakes! That's it! Now I know where I've seen this before! Wow! Hey, oh, who put this funny-looking piece of wood right where we would land on it? Somebody should be more careful! It's the missing parking gate! We didn't ask what it is! We want to know who put it here! It's a mystery! <laughs> Whoa! Sorry, fellas! The broken parking gate mystery will have to wait. Huckle and his team have to solve the missing mayor mystery first. Someone's honking again. It sounds like the same horn we heard before. Jumping jitterbugs! Could this be another mystery that needs solving? It isn't another mystery, Goldbug. I think the honking and this funny stick we found and the missing parking gate are all clues to the same mystery. The missing mayor mystery? Yes, here's what I think happened. On our way to City Hall to look for Mayor Fox, we heard a horn honking that sounded familiar, but we didn't see a car. After speaking to Miss Quill, we knew the mayor had definitely picked up the special scissors. And since his parking space was empty, we knew he didn't stay at City Hall. Then we found the red stick near the mayor's parking space. I thought I'd seen it before, but I couldn't remember where. Then I realized it was the brake lever from the mayor's car. I think the brake lever fell off the mayor's car, but he didn't know it. Without a brake lever to stop him, he went right through the parking gate. Then he went down the hill. And since he didn't have brakes, he couldn't slow down and went right off the road. Right where Big Will and Big Won't found the broken parking gate that fell off his car. Are you saying that Mayor Fox and his car are in these bushes? I think so, Goldbug, and I think he's the one who's honking. Hmm. Aha! There he is! The missing mayor mystery is solved. It's a good thing Huckle and his team are never stuck for a solution. Everybody all together solved a mystery with Huckle. You can solve one, two. 
Sorry to rush things, but could someone help me out of here? I have a ribbon that needs cutting. At long last, I declare Busy Town Skate Park officially open. Thanks for tracking me down, Harko. You're welcome. The added works great. But now it looks like they're going to need seat belts too. <laughs> <laughs> the Apple Orchard Spaceman Mystery. Slowly, you're the first warm astronaut. Hey, Tuckle. Boy, it sure is hot in this spacesuit. I really need a drink. We saw it! We really saw it! Saw so what, Pig Won't? What'd you see, Pig Will? A spaceman! From another planet! In Granny Good Pig's Apple Orchard! Look, Pig Won't! Another spaceman! They're everywhere! Oh! It's just me, Lily. Why are you both so jumpy? Pig Will and Pig Won't say they saw a spaceman from another planet in Granny Goodpig's apple orchard. You two have such big imaginations. I'll say. You always think you're seeing an alien or monster. Not an alien. And not a monster. A, a spaceman, spaceman from, from another, another planet! planet. And this time, we really saw it. We even have a picture to prove it. You took a photograph of it? Better than that, we drew a picture of it. It's not a very good drawing. That's because we couldn't see it very well. That's fog. It was really foggy out. It wasn't fog, it was smoke. It was fog. Smoke. Wait a second. Why would a spaceman from another planet carry a stick? We didn't hang around long enough to find out. We ran home and hid under the covers. What do you think, Huckle? Well, Sally, I'm not sure what they saw, but I do know one thing. This is definitely a... mystery! Busy Town Action Bug News! Goldbug here, reporting live at Huckle's house. So what kind of mystery are you suiting up for this time, Huckle? Well, Goldbug, Pig Will and Pig Won't thought they saw a spaceman. So we're going to figure out what they really saw and solve the Apple Orchard Spaceman Mystery. Ready for it? Here goes! Who, what, why, how? Who, what, when, where, why, how? Who, what, why, how? Who, what, when, where, why, how? Everybody! Who, what, when, where, why, how? Solve a mystery! for important news updates. Goldbug, ah! So how are we going to find out what Pig Will and Pig Won't really saw, Huckle? We can start by looking for clues at Granny Good Pig's apple orchard. There! We saw the spaceman right over there by those boxes. Oh, careful, children. I wouldn't get too close to those honey boxes if I were you. Honey, we love honey. Watch it. There's more than honey in those boxes. There's bees. Bees? That's right. The bees make the honey and I collect it. Bees can sting. Uh, maybe we don't like honey quite so much after all. Don't the bees sting you when you collect the honey, Granny? 
Oh, they try to sting me, Sally, but I wear a special thick suit with a big hood that protects me when I collect the honey. Would you like to see it? Well, actually, Granny, we're busy right now solving a mystery. We came to ask you if you saw anything unusual out here last night. What do you mean, unusual? Like an unusual spaceman! We saw one right here last night! Oh, you two are always coming up with stories about seeing aliens and things. <laughs> Not aliens, Granny! Or things! This time it's a spaceman from another planet! Well, you're welcome to look around for your spaceman if you like. <laughs> Just remember to stay well clear of those honey boxes. <laughs> uh, Huckle, maybe it's not such a good idea to look around here for clues. Those bees sound buzzy. Maybe you're right, Loli. But then how are we ever going to figure out what Pigwill and Pigwot really saw in the fog? It was smoke! It was fog! It was smoke! Wait a second. If it was smoke you saw, that means there must have been a fire nearby. Do we know anyone who wears a special suit and helmet when there's a fire? I know! The Busy Town Firefighters! Right! Maybe Pigwill and Pigwont saw one of the firefighters wearing their special fire suit. There's only one way to find out. Busy Town Fire Station, here we come! The Spaceman! <laughs> Relax, it's just me! But why are you wearing a spacesuit, Firefighter Smokey? It's not a spacesuit. It's a special fire suit that protects me from the flames when I'm fighting big fires. Were you or any of the other firefighters out in Granny Goodpig's orchard last night? Pig Will and Pig Won't thought they saw smoke. No, it wasn't us. And there were no fires reported near Granny's last night, but it was pretty foggy. Maybe what you two saw was fog. Told you it was fog. Okay, so it wasn't smoke, but I did see a spaceman. Me too! We both saw it! Sorry, guys, but I'm still not sure it was a spaceman. But if it wasn't a spaceman or a firefighter, what did they see? That I don't know. <laughs> I can stop! Hey! That diver figurine gives me an idea. Maybe Pig Will and Pig Won't saw a diver coming out of the river near Granny's orchard. A diver that was wearing a diving suit like that one. Sally's right! That diving suit looks a lot like a space suit. Hey, our diver friend Jacques has one just like it. Maybe it was Jacques that Pig Will and Pig Won't saw last night. Only one way to find out. Next stop, Busy Town Dive Shop. The door is locked. The dive shop must be closed. And I don't see Jacques anywhere. Bonjour, mes amis. Hi, Jacques. We came to ask you if you were wearing your diving suit in the river near Granny Goodpig's orchard last night. No, it wasn't me. Besides, the river behind Granny's isn't deep enough to dive in. Okay, thanks, Jacques. See you. Au revoir. Well, this means it wasn't a diver or a firefighter you saw. So what did you see? Maybe it was... A spaceman! I think the only way we're going to find out for sure is to go back to Granny's apple orchard. But what about the bees? If we go back when it's dark, the bees will be sleeping. Huckle's right. They won't bother us if we're careful and don't wake them up. Hey, I wonder why Granny left her walking stick here. Maybe the bees chased her away and she didn't have time to grab her stick. No, that couldn't happen. The bees don't bother Granny, remember? She says she wears a special thick suit to protect herself from them. I'll bet she left her walking stick behind when the spaceman whisked her off to another planet. You go look for clues. We're staying right here so we don't get stung or whisked off to another planet like Granny. Let me guess. You saw the spaceman? <laughs> they saw something. Let's go. I don't see a spaceman anywhere. Hey, look. Someone took the honeycombs from that box. The spaceman. 
man loves honey just as much as we do. Maybe that's why he whisked Granny away, so he could get her honey. And the bees can't sting him because he's wearing a spacesuit to protect him, just like Granny. Speaking of Granny, where did her walk-in stick go? It was there a few minutes ago, now it's gone. That's strange. The stick that the spaceman in your drawing is holding looks just like a walking stick. Why would a spaceman need a walking stick like Granny? Aha! I think I know who your spaceman really is. Uh, so have you solved the apple orchard spaceman mystery? I think I have, Goldbug. Here's what I think happened. Pig Will and Pig Won't saw someone wearing what looked like a green spacesuit and helmet in Granny's apple orchard. But it wasn't a firefighter in a special green fire suit or a diver in a green diving suit. That's when I remembered that Granny said when she collected honey, she wears a special thick suit with a hood that protects her from the bees. The spacesuit in the drawing looked thick with a big hood. And the spaceman also had a stick just like Granny's. So I think the spaceman was really Granny wearing her special bee suit. She's the one who collected the honey and took her walking stick. Have you children found your spaceman yet? We just did, Granny. Huckle was right. Everybody all together solved a mystery with Huckle. You can solve one, two. Three, four, Huckle! So you thought my bee suit was a space suit. Oh, here's a jar of honey almost as big as your imaginations. You can have it on pancakes for breakfast. There's enough for everyone. Honey. The Pick and Run Mystery. <laughs> I can't reach. If we're going to help Farmer Patrick with his apple harvest, we'd better get a ladder. We don't need a ladder if I can get a boost. How about it, Hucko? Hey, good thinking, Lily. Gotcha! <laughs> I think we're the best apple picking team in Busy Town. Huh? What's that thing? It looks like some kind of robot. I think it's an apple picking robot. Hey, kids! We've got a visitor! Oh, hey, oh hi, Mr. Visit! Hi, kids! What do you think of my latest invention? The automatic apple picker! It's amazing! When Mr. Fixit told me he brought a one-armed apple picker to help in the orchard, I wasn't expecting to shake hands with that thing. <laughs> hey, the robot didn't pick the green apple. It picked the red one. It must know that the green apples aren't ripe yet. It does, Sally. Come see this. It's built to search for round red apples that are ripe for picking. No need to pick apples by hand anymore. Now that the automatic apple picker is on the job, <laughs> well, team, time to hit the road. Thanks for all your help, kids. You're welcome. Bye. See you later. OK, Sally, ring toss. You got it. <laughs> Looking good. Wally, <laughs> are you OK? Sure, uh, I'm OK. Just a little dizzy. <laughs> I think you mean a little dizzy. And the next time I looked out, they were gone. I wonder what's going on at Granny Goat's. Looks like something's up. Let's go check it out. I don't see anything in here but leaves and... Ow! Thorns! Hey, guys. What you looking for? <gasps> Ouch! Uh, looking for? Nothing. But you told me you were looking for clues. Clues? Are you two solving a mystery? Yes, they are. Pig Will and Pig Won't told me they'd find out who took my lovely red roses. The roses were here one minute and then gone the next. It's a mystery. 
It was our mystery, but then you guys showed up. Yeah, you always get to have all the mystery-solving fun. Hey, relax. We're not going to take your mystery from you. You're not? No. You were here first, so it's only fair that you solve this mystery. Perhaps Huckle and his team could join you boys. I hear they're pretty clever when it comes to mystery solving. Well, I don't know. What do you think, Pigwell? We'd have to get one thing straight. Pigwoat and I are the mystery solving bosses. Sure, that's okay. Splendid. I'll leave you kids to it then. Okay, let's get started. Because... We've got a mystery! Video Action Bug News! Goat Bug here, reporting live from Granny Goat's Garden, where Pig Will and Pig Won't have picked a budding mystery to solve. Give us the dirt, boys. Well, Goat Bug, some garden prowling scoundrel picked all of Granny Goat's red roses. And we are going to find out who! You got it! Ready for it? Here goes! This is no garden variety mystery, but luckily a hand-picked team of mystery solvers is going to solve the pick and run mystery. I'm Goldbug, and that's the buzz in Fizzy Town. Hmm. No one touched the pink roses or the yellow roses. Only the red ones were picked. Uh -huh. That means we're looking for someone whose favorite color is red. And someone carrying around a bunch of red roses. Whoa, we're good! This is easy. Now we have to decide which way to look for clues next. Hmm. I think this might be a good spot. You can't just go any which way. That's right. You have to think of where there might be clues to find. Ooh, this is interesting. Flower petals. Yeah, yeah, but which way should we go? Uh... Ahem. <clears throat> Gosh, I wonder where red flower petals like these could have come from. Uh, did you say red flower petals? <gasps> they probably fell off of Granny Goat's red roses. Good work, Pigwell. Only expert mystery solvers like us could figure that out. Come on, you guys. Follow those rose petals. Hey, Mr. Frumble! Yoo-hoo! <laughs> oh, hi there, kids. Did you see anybody running by here with a bunch of red roses? No, I'm afraid I didn't. Did you see anybody with a bunch of tomatoes from my garden? Nope, we didn't. Sorry. Bye, Mr. Frumble. Thanks. Whoa. Uh, hold on a minute, guys. Mr. Frumble's missing tomatoes could be another clue to help us with our mystery. What do roses and tomatoes have to do with each other? <laughs> Nothing! This is no time to talk about lost vegetables, Huckle. We have a real mystery to solve. We'll catch up to them after we ask Mr. Frumble a few questions. Hi, Mr. Frumble. Could you tell us more about your missing tomatoes? Well, I'm afraid there's not much to tell, Huckle, except whoever took the tomatoes doesn't like broccoli or Brussels sprouts. Only the tomatoes were taken. Do you think whoever took Mr. Frumble's tomatoes also took Granny Goat's roses? Well, it's hard to say, Sally. Well, we need more clues before we can decide if there's any connection. Let's catch up with Big Will and Big Won't. Maybe they found another clue. There they are, Busy Town Park. It looks like they found something. Come on. Okay. Okay, that'll do it. Good work, guys. We were hoping you'd find another clue. Oh, we gave up on that clue hunting business. That's the slow way of solving a mystery. We came up with a better plan. Operation Rosebush Ambush. Check it out. Whoever took Granny Goat's roses is in for a big surprise when they try to pick this one. Where did you get that rose? It looks real, doesn't it? We made it ourselves. No! No, stop! 
You have to set the trap again. You have to get the ladder. No, you get the ladder. No, you. Oh, Do you still think Pig Will and Pig Won't should be in charge of this case? Well, their mystery-solving ideas are different than mine, but I think we should let them give it a try. Who knows? It might just work. In the meantime, can we get back to solving this mystery our way? <laughs> sure, Loli. We'll report back to Big Will and Big Won't when they're not so busy. <laughs> Junior Bunny, what's the matter? My ball is gone. Uh, a thingy took it away. What did the thingy look like? It had wheels and a claw, and it was grabbing for my red ball like this. Hmm. Junior Bunny's ball was red and round-shaped, just like the tomatoes, just like the roses, and just like the apples in Farmer Patrick's orchard. What are you thinking, Huckle? I'm thinking I've just solved the... Mystery! <laughs> Goldbug here with an exciting news update. Huckle, is it true you've solved the pick and run mystery? That's what it looks like, Goldbug. Here's what I think happened. First, we learned that Granny Goat's roses disappeared. Not the yellow ones or the pink ones, only the red roses. Then in Mr. Frumble's garden, we learned that his ripe red tomatoes were picked, but the other green vegetables weren't touched. Then Junior Bunny told us that his ball was taken by a robot. His ball was red, too. That's when I remembered Mr. Fix-It's new robot, searching for and picking ripe red apples in Farmer Patrick's orchard. I think that when the robot left the orchard, it kept looking for red round shapes to pick. It found roses, tomatoes, and a ball, mistaking them for ripe red apples. Mystery, Mystery solved. solved! Everybody all together solved a mystery with Huckle. You can solve one, two. We solved the mystery! Pig Will and Pig Won't? News flash! Pig Will and Pig Won't have just arrived with some fresh evidence that could bust the pick and run mystery case wide open! Great going, you two! You caught the robot! The robot? Isn't that what's in the box? I don't know. We haven't opened it yet. Mr. Root? I'm here with Mr. Root, Chief Gardener for Busy Town Park. Mr. Root, can you tell us what happened? I'm not really sure. One moment I was trimming hedges, and the next thing I knew, I was trapped in a box. Why don't you explain, Pigwalt? No, you explain. No, you. No, you. You, you. Come along now, Apple Picker. No more running off. Farmer Patrick, can I check the robot's basket, please? Be my guest, Huckle. This naughty robot wandered away from the farm and went on a picking spree. Aha! Look what I found! My ball! What do you know? There are tomatoes and roses in here, too. Hey, there's our rose! Yeah! Here, you take it! No, you take it! No, you take Whoa. it! You... 